Today we're going to start with the nation. Tinubu Shatima APC chiefs shut down Kano. Ex Lagos governor promises to serve Nigerians. Nupeg threatens strike. Wiki confidence of victory for his preferred presidential candidate. Government targets 8.2 trillion naira from non oil sector. Air Force deploys branch chiefs, AOCs. NDDC barred from awarding contract above limits. Akinjide Oyeleshe Polarumi in work for Atiku. CBN 1.35 trillion Polaris Bank sale most competitive offer. Oh, that's true. Okay. Which story are we starting with? Major oh. headline. So, um, yesterday it was a carnival in Kano State as people trooped out. So, it, it was like, um, the, the, I love the way the nation put it. It said, supporters trooped to the ancient city like pilgrims. And the pictures, the videos, they said that people everywhere you could turn, there were people all around Kano. The campaign that the presidential campaign for um, APC, Ashwaji Bola Bertidobo, as well as his um, um, flag, his running mates, were both at the um, Amino, let me get the Kano, at the Amino Stadium. Kano. Am, Amino Kano Stadium. They also mentioned many other state governors were also there. A lot of big Greek politicians were there. And the average Nigerian within the area, the Kekena Pep artisans, riders, different support groups, all of them showed up to support the candidacy of the APC, um, the APC presidential candidates in Kano. They said there was traffic, but it looked, it looked like it was okay. well attended. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, governor of River State, yes, on Wiki, yesterday at the flag of, of the construction of a road, Akpabu Egbed, Egbeda Omoku Road. I'm so sorry. It says Egbeda, and I'm wondering, is it the same Egbeda? But of course, this is in River State. And um, while he was there, he talked about the fact that, you know, they were not supporting the candidate um, for the PDP, the presidential flag bearer for the PDP. And he says that he's still waiting that instead of getting into the back and forth with those who are consulting him concerning his um, lack of um, his lack of support for their candidate uh, PDP candidate, he is just making sure he puts everything together towards the support of his yet to be announced candidate. He says whoever he supports will end up winning the election, and he's saying that for all those that are insulting him, um, you cannot even get up to, see, some of them who do not have 25 votes are busy abusing leaders. When you finish abusing leaders, right. you will pay. So um, he's just saying that he, they, as of now, we still don't know who his preferred candidate will be, but he said he's doing everything to mobilize for the support mm. of that candidate. He'll find well, Tom has come out to say he's supporting LP. So maybe the G5 mm. have different people they are supporting. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, I was going to take mm -hmm. the NDDC. So the Loretta Onoche led Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC board <coughs> was inaugurated yesterday by the ministry, the ministry, the Niger Delta Ministry, Minister Omana Okun Omana. I was saying that they're not there to go and start awarding contracts to beyond a certain threshold. Mm -hmm. They are there actually to maintain uh, the new management must abide by the operating financial regulations to ensure prudence in the management of the resources. And also, they don't, they, they, he, he urges them not to, to, not to, he urges you to shun the impulse. For the award of spurious and indiscriminate new contracts, mm -hmm. and suggest that you instead focus on the completion of ongoing projects. And even if they're going to award at all, it kind of was a person a certain threshold. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that NDDC board has been finally inaugurated, and hopefully, I know a lot of eyes will be on NDC now. But um, we'll see how that plays out as the as the months come along. So, uh, Madam of the Federal Ministry of Finance, have um, done the breakdown of how we're financing our budget and I'm happy that we are doing well with our non-oil sector. She's projecting 78% of the finances to come from non, the non-oil sector, which amounts to about 8.2 trillion for the total revenue that they're estimating. And the oil sector is just going to be giving us... So she's projecting, meaning that she's hoping? She's no, no, no. Based on how they performed last, last, year, last okay, budget, last year. Okay. they're projecting how the finances will come and what they're generating. So the revenues that will come from mainly from the non-oil sector covers 
of 78% of the budget. What do you mean? That's informed projections. So yes. I hope that... Um, then the 2.2 trillion, which is supposed to come from oil, from oil sector, yeah. that's what they're planning. So oil sector used to be our dominant uh, contributor. Yeah. But because of the subsidy we are paying, which she is already saying that we need about 3.3 trillion. We are still paying for subsidy. This, for just six months into next yeah. year to pay for subsidy. So that also has been budgeted for. All right. And then the balance of 11.3 uh, trillion will be gained from, uh, collected from borrowing again. So we are still going to be servicing that and borrowing yeah. again. So okay, the punch. Be. This goes hike electricity tariff. Secretly, consumers kick. Elections, INEC set aside. 8,808 um, vivas as backup. Sex from principal denies cover up, suspends mm -hmm. six students. 2.4, 2.74 trillion naira security budget low, says reps. Few marketers boycott private depots. I don't understand why assassins killed my brother, his wife, and son, mm. slain CBN workers' sibling. An NPC prospects oil uh, for oil in Niger and Bornu. 25 buyers invited for Polaris Bank sale, says CBN. Okay, okay I'll take the um, uh, Federal Government College Janiki story. I know a lot of us have already heard you know, some of yeah. the allegations um, about students who abscond from school and go <coughs> and have um, sex rooms in hotels. And the school was able to um, pick the students up and some were expelled while others were suspended. But the school is picking up and denying some of the um, allegations. He says, first of all, um, the school, because it was alleged that the school was trying to cover up this, this thing that happened, and the school is saying that there was never a cover up. After all, they're the ones that informed parents about it. And so um, the parents were being, you know, mischievous by, make it, by, by suggesting that the school was trying to hide it. That after all, they were the ones that found these children. They had done a spot check on a Sunday and realized that some children were missing. They even called their parents to find out if those children had, were at home. And the parents said they were not. They came to the school and somebody was able to tell them that they had gone somewhere. And that even there was another session where some of their kids would go off to um, uh, a club and they had been in talks with that <coughs> club. And they had like their pictures and names. Mm -hmm. And that club was able to tell the school when those children arrived there. And you know, they took the children away. And those ones were prefects were debarged and also suspended and were allowed. They said also there was, there's no case of um, someone getting pregnant. We heard that someone had gotten pregnant for this, from this alleged romp. But they said that no one had gotten pregnant except for a blind student who, during the COVID, that outside school got pregnant and she was, let, um, she was expelled from school because they said they are raising young girls and not mothers to be. So they're just saying that, you know, um, the story out there where it looked like the school was not, um, was negligent is untrue. Mm. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing points. I was going to take the INEC story. Go on. Take a story. Let me take the INEC story. So INEC was informing Nigerians that they have received the last batch of the Beavers machines. If you recall, Beavers is going to be the machine, the biomodel voters accreditation scheme um, um, system machine that will be deployed nationwide for voting. So according to them, they have about 176,846 polling units across the country. But this additional 8,900, uh, 8,809 will be deployed to the registered areas as backups. So for example, if, there, if anything, if any BVAS malfunctions, there'll be two per region or per, per registration area as a backup to give to any polling unit that's having a um, machine malfunction. So they received that yesterday. And they're happy, and they, according to them, they've also established um, um, units at the airports, four-year airports in Abuja, Port Harcourt, Lagos, and um, Kano. And according to them, they have airport hubs. So they, that's where these beavers will be delivered to and then further transferred to other, other states um, as, as required. So I want so, to take the major headline in this course. So this sponge report has caught up with, um, you know, how service and tariff hikes have happened. According to the report, Quietly, silently, but surely, these schools have increased their tariffs per <coughs> unit on the prepaid meters, and I have an experience on the estimated bills. And they took an inventory from Abuja Disco, all the discos around. In Lagos, for instance, um, a, a user said that 72, it is now 72.2 Naira per unit, as opposed to the 66 
point uh, 66 naira per unit and NARC did not announce any increase but the discourse just silently continued to increase I missed poor services that's the one that is paining me and he, and what what I experienced I have a business place that is on the estimated bill for now I'm trying to get a prepaid meter for it and I used to pay like initially six thousand because whether power comes or not it's mostly on gen all the machines I use are on generator on fuel and they suddenly increased it to 15,000 a month. And that month, there was really, really no light. So we're looking to invest in solar now immediately to remove ourselves yeah. from these services. You cannot continue to do things like this. I hope the NERC reads this report across board, all the accounts of people, fact check it and do something about it. Okay, moving on to Daily Sun. Nigeria's debt may hit 77 trillion naira by May 2019. May. May 29, 2023. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, the Kano's family cries out, expresses concern over his continuous detention. 2023 budget, 3.36 trillion air earmarked for fuel subsidy raises dust. Ngige tackles Obasanjo for criticizing Buhari in letter to Nigerians. Assets declaration, court bars DSS, police, CCB, from probing INEC chair. PDP leaders intensify moves to pacify G5 governors. 1999 constitution would guarantee emergence of credible leaders, says Afe Babalola. And Enugu's oil producing status, my biggest joy is that my successor will excel, says Gunwai. Okay, which story are we starting with in Daily Sun? Let me take the fact that our fuel scarcity challenges might be worsening. Mm. So the petrol, petrol tankers, tanker drivers, um, as the branch of the Nupeng has said they've threatened that they are going to go on strike. And the reason for their strike is because they allege that security agencies have been, um, have been, they've been brutal to their members. And they mentioned the names of the people that the only condition they will not go on strike if, is if commensurate compensation is paid to their affected members. These are people that they felt that the drivers of two trucks that were polite in offering necessary documents to officers who stopped them to ask them for documents. Later, we're now found to, um, they said there was squabble between the police officers as well as the Nupeng, um, PTDA Nupeng, PTD Nupeng members that led to one person being killed and the truck was burnt down. There are several other cases that were listed, but now they have threatened strike. And I really know that the government tends to respond to anything that has to do with the so I'm sure there would be a quick mm. response to this, but the government has been slow when it comes to fuel scarcity. So I mm. hope that the distraction <laughs> of election doesn't take people's, take all our politicians' mind away from the fact that the country still needs to run between now and where the election will take place. Please, let's resolve this issue before they actually down tools. Okay, so, mm. um, a federal court sitting in Abuja has cancelled, thro throw out all the <laughs> trumped up allegations about false asset declaration against the INEC chairman. So some people had gone to court against the INEC chairman, insisting he had uh, falsely declared his assets. And you know, they were asking that the DSS, the, the CBB, and all the other investigative body do the needful. And people had, uh, alleged also that this was to, to kick him out of office just before the election so that you know, he destabilize everything. But the judge sitting in, in uh, Abuja said, all the 14 um, prayers in their petition thrown out, or none of them were able, they were able to substantiate. He validly um, declared his assets and the court found it to, be, to have been validly declared and that his uh, assets were also legitimately his and that there are no <coughs> issues there. So I think we are clean and clear right. on the INEC chairman. Namdi Kanu's brother, family. Prince Emmanuel, has cried out saying that why, are there, why is this sudden silence from the Southeast governors? According to him, there's a uh, court ruling to release Namdekano, but unfortunately, the federal government has yet to release um, Namdekano in spite of the judgments by the court. Um, he also said that um, he's, he's saying, why is everybody quiet even after the Moya federal court has asked for the immediate release of his brother, says that all the governors in the South East seem to be um, mm. too quiet on this and they, they are not also obviously relaying the messages at the grid. Because according to him, Namdekano had agreed to drop the agitation once for restructuring. And that hasn't been related to the federal government and is causing a lot of rift. And he's saying that he's, he's insisting that he should release his younger brother, Nam De Kanum, and um, that the governors in the Southeast are not being sincere. 
in the support for Namdekano. That's me paraphrasing. Moving on quickly <laughs> now to Vanguard. We have been borrowing to fund petrol subsidies, says Finance Minister. Mm -hmm. Anger, caution as FG inaugurates NDDC board. Five feet killed as Carnival turns blood in Nondo. Tinumbu, I'll bring peace harmony to Nigeria if elected. DSS arrests ISOP commander, one other for Kogi bomb blast. OPS rejects finance bill, says business woes will worsen. And new COVID-19 warrants variants not in Nigeria, says NCDC. Okay, so let me take the major headline. Um, the Minister for Finance... Mrs. Zainab Ahmed <laughs> said yesterday that the federal government has been borrowing to fund um, the subsidy. She mentioned that it is not sustainable, that the subsidy regime has been extended, was extended for 18 months. It will end by July this June, extended till middle of 2023, based on that extension that it was given, and that was um, 3.36 trillion was provided for the petrol subsidy. And after then, it will probably have to go, according to her, because it is not sustainable to continue like this. I just really wish that the president kept to his um, statement that they were going to remove the petrol subsidy. But now they are pushing it to whoever becomes the, the, next, president, president. the, the next president will have to deal with the backlash that will come from this. But mm. let's just let's manage as so, we're doing. Yeah, NCDC, um, that's our Nigeria Center for Disease Control is saying that um, COVID-19 Omicron and its sub-lineages are partly responsible for the current increase in cases in China, the UK and the US. And it said that they're monitoring, they're seriously monitoring, um, you know, cases and they haven't seen any of those particular variants in Nigeria as of yet. And they also mentioned that those restrictions, those travel restrictions that um, were placed before request for PCR negative tests, you know, for incoming travelers, that those ones had little or no effect on preventing global and national circulation of Omicron because it had a very short incubation period. But that their eyes, you know, they're, they're working on the surveillance and as, and as of the time of this report, we ha they haven't detected anything yet. Mm -hmm. I know some other countries are beginning to wear their face masks mm -hmm. again. Maybe we should just start doing that and just <laughs> then to just say that, you know, it will mm -hmm. not work. Those restrictions. I think we should still put those restrictions and then go back to wearing our face masks. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. <laughs> I'm in Nigeria. <laughs> Nigerian Tribune. Uh, presidential candidates, local peculiarities to affect G5 governor's choices. 20 rice farmers feared dead in Kebby boat accident. How a medical doctor was killed while attending to patients in Delta State. Nobody took that story. Mm -hmm. uh, 1999 Constitution wounds guarantee emergence of credible leaders is Afe Babalola. New Finance Bill National Assembly approves three year imprisonment, 10 million naira fine on corrupt public officers. And Nigeria's debt may hit 77 trillion naira, says DMO. All right, I was going to. So I want go to ahead. take the rice farmers okay. on their way from. Um, the, according to the DC, uh, DC, DSP, Nafio Abubakar, who is the spokesperson in KB, uh, police spokesperson in KB, he confirmed that. You know, the accident of a boat that capsized with 100, 100 passengers inside. They called it a rickety boat. And it, had, it was carrying rice farmers from Samanaji to a, a riverine community in, around Kebi to a place near Kebi. And the boat capsized. 80 people were rescued alive. Oh. 10 were found dead. And others have not been found. We were able to find four female, and, uh, four female corpses and six male corpses. And um, most of them were young rice farmers on Outside. their way. I wonder, this is not the first time we take it, and they always call the boats rickety. The state governors around Niger, can you people invest in, in proper boats? Can they have private uh, people come the way they are doing now in Lagos, between uh, Korodu and Island, and have people invest? Because and that's the major, major source of transportation in that area. I know all the time my rice uh, miller always tells me they are coming from Kebi on the boats. Sometimes they have to pay taxes. So we know that you know, using the river is something that is a known practice. You can invest in it and protect people's lives. Can okay, so the National Assembly <clears throat> has finally approved um, three years imprisonment and 10 millionaire fine for any public officer who is in, discharge of his, in the discharge of his or her duties, awards or signs any contract without budget provision, administrative approvals, and procurement plan. 
Now, according to Vanguard, this is a boost for anti-corruption drive. But many Nigerians will probably think, this is not enough. Three years, how long is three years? Ten million naira is probably nothing to somebody who's already corrupt. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, really, if we want to take anti-corruption seriously, we need something more stringent, I would think. That's my own view yeah. on this. But any other story in Tribune, that's all we can take. On front page review, China did something worse. I think countries like, you know, if you really want to fight corruption, you got to just <laughs> take the bull by the horn. All these Nigerians three years that in jail, they were calling, Nigerians will even agree. Let me know, fine. Those things don't do anything for anybody. <laughs>